it's important for those who work in schools to understand how kids like this are created. These things don't just happen. I was that kid. I'm here to tell you that there are many more kids like that in our nation's schools. I don't know if I can make this video right now, actually. I'm trying to make it. No, I don't think I can make it. I'm gonna try. So I've been aware of all of the shootings taking place uh, back home. I'm on vacation with my family. I'm celebrating my daughter's 12th birthday today. And while celebrating with her, I couldn't help but think about all of the kids who were killed recently in Texas and all of the people who were killed in Buffalo, New York recently. And, um, you know, man, seeing the pictures of these kids who've been killed, um, it's, it's beyond devastating. It's beyond heartbreaking. You know, uh, my condolences go out to all of the parents, all of the family and friends of those babies who've been killed. Um, my heart breaks with you. My family's heart breaks with you. And, um, and we are just, I, I can't even put into words how disturbed we are by, um, by such senseless, tragic murders. I was reading some articles and I came across one in which a reporter interviewed the friend, interviewed a friend of the Texas shooter. He says that they uh, used to play video games together. He said, and his classmates, several of the classmates of, of the students at that school used to make fun of his clothes and used to make fun of the financial situation of his family. And eventually he stopped coming to school. He slowly just became less and less present until he eventually dropped out. And that's usually the story of many of these shooters. And if you know anything about my background, then you know that I was that kid. I was the kid that people made fun of because of my clothes, because of my shoes, because of my hair, because of my skin color, and made fun of my family, made fun of me. I had holes in my shoes. I mean, I was the kid that everyone made fun of. Not everyone, most people, most kids made fun of, even teachers sometimes. And I started hating myself and I started hating others, and I started hating school, until eventually I started ditching school. And I ditched school 60 to 90 days from fourth to ninth grade. And things just kept getting worse. Things went from bad to worse. Problems at home, problems in school, problems outside of school. And eventually my hope just died. Hope that someone would care about me, hope that my life could get better hope that there was a better way, hope that I would belong somewhere, hope that I would be accepted. And eventually that died. And when that died in me, an anger was born. And that anger was creating in me a bitterness that made me want to ruin people's lives. It made me when I saw happy people, I wanted to do something to get that smile off of their faces because it felt like they were either mocking me or making fun of me for my misery. And I wanted other people to experience the rage and the bitterness and the sadness that I was living with. And so I share that with you because um, it's important for those who work in schools to understand how kids like this are created how kids like this are created. These things don't just happen. These things are the end result of a long series of heartbreak and disappointment and shame and alienation and ostracism and mockery and teasing. There's a hopelessness among so many kids in this country. There's a hopelessness among so many kids in this country and I've been trying to sound the alarm and trying to draw attention to the pain and the heartbreak and the hopelessness of so many kids like me at the bottom who need hope, who need help. And so there are so many things I want to share with you right now, but what I want to say is that 
Um, I was the kid who was so far gone that I was at the edge of doing something that would have ruined the lives of a whole lot of people. Back then, I was the kid who, uh, who was in trouble. And schools today need leaders and teachers and counselors and educators who are being intentional about reaching out to kids who seem like they're on the margins, building relationships with kids who feel like they don't belong, building relationships with those kids who seem like they are at the edge of doing something devastating. The ones who are about to drop out, the ones who are terrible in school, the ones who are failing all their tests, the ones who sit alone in the cafeteria, the ones who sit there with the hoodies over their heads, the ones who keep their earphones in, the invisible ones, the ones that people don't really invest in, the ones that require a whole lot of work and so no one really wants to fool with them. Those kids. I used to be that kid and right now I just want to encourage you to not only hug your own kids but to be thinking about ways to make sure every kid in your school feels loved, seen, safe, valued. You know, in addition to, um, of course, doing all of the emergency drills that others are calling for. In addition to uh, making sure that every teacher knows the emergency drills and all of that stuff. Um, and all of the SEL stuff is, is important. But I'm just not real big on programs. I'm real big on people. And the programs are only as good as the people who are running them, who are participating in them. So for me, it's about that individual leader, that teacher, that adult, reaching out to that kid saying, hey, I see you. And I just want you to know I care about you. You matter to me. If, if there's anything going in your life, on in your life, I'm here to talk to you. I'm here to listen. I'm here to be your friend. I'm here to support you. Um, if you don't have food at home, please let me know. I see, let me help you get some shoes. If, if, if you're feeling, you know, if you're feeling lost, I'm here for you. It's going out of your way to be intentional. Be intentional about helping those kids, all right? So I'm gonna go celebrate my, my baby's 12th birthday with her tonight at dinner. But I just wanted to get this out and let you know that I'm, uh, I'm praying for these families. I'm praying for every leader in school, every teacher who's working with these kids right now. I know you're tired. I know you're discouraged sometimes. I know you feel overworked and overwhelmed. But this is what it's about. For me, this is what it's about. Reaching that kid. I've been working with kids like that all over this nation. I'm in assembly sometimes and I can identify those kids and I'll pull administrators aside and say, you need to talk to him. I'm telling you, this is a potential school shooter. Go spend time with that kid. I'm telling you, this is the kid. I, I've, because I was that kid, I'm here to tell you that there are many more kids like that in our nation's schools. And you can build a relationship with that kid. That one relationship can give that kid hope and help that kid believe that someone does care that their lives do matter. All right? I'm your friend, Dr. Manuel Scott, and uh, I'll check in with you later.